Hello, uh, good evening. Welcome to Professor Alexander Dugan of Moscow State University continuing Open University Lecture Series on Ethnosociology. Tonight's lecture will focus on a discussion of the structures of the ethnos. Professor Dugan? Thank you. So, first of all, uh, we should remind that uh, the concept of ethnos um, is uh, centered by the sacred. All in the ethnos is sacred. Uh, it is sacred uh, in the sense that uh, all is um, linked to some special dimension. Uh, to get the idea of what is sacred in the ethnic community, uh, we need to evoke uh, Rudolf Otto, the German author that uh, has written the book uh, that is called uh, Das Heilige, uh, The Sacred. In this book, uh, he developed uh, the concept of the sacred as uh, something that includes not only sanctity, not only um, uh, highest level of uh, spiritual life, but also something that inspires to the primitive man the fear, the, the sense, the feeling uh, of awe, the feeling of of, uh, um, uh, of uh, uh, terror also. So it is a uh, the sacred feeling. Uh, it uh, is not only. Um, uh, the feeling of happiness. It is also the, the, the feeling of uh, something terrible. So, uh, the, the most important feature of the sacred is that uh, the sacred is something uh, that uh, is uh, out of normal, out of everyday, out of the common. So the sacred is exceptional, but this exceptionality is also the central point of ethnic uh, living, uh, ethnic life, so ethnic existence. So ethnos is structured around the axis of the sacred. So it is exceptional, but it is foundational at the same time. It is in the center of all ethnic phenomena. So uh, religion, uh, as uh, modern know it, um, we could consider, uh, consider as a half of the sacred or the um, top uh, side of the sacred or um, the, the side of the light. But the sacred also possesses uh, the side of, uh, of the blackness or of, um, of the darkness. So um, uh, the sacred unites the best and the worst, the uh, most um, uh, spiritual, and most terrible aspect of reality. And uh, in the feeling of sacred, of the sacred, uh, that is the unity of the both, of the um, terror and love, um, of uh, the sense of the greatness and um, the most profound horror of uh, inspired by uh, being itself. So, uh, this sacred nature is explanation of many uh, ethnic structures. So, because the ethnos is, uh, is uh, constructed as such on the ground of the sacred. So, religion 
could be regarded as a formal part of uh, the uh, complex of the sacred. But also the sacred includes some private aspect of life, some family or um, uh, institutions and so on that uh, that doesn't enter in the context of the religion as such. So in the ethnos all is sacred but um, it is not uh, uh, it is an appearance of the things it is a kind of the center or the heart of of the thing. If um, uh, ethnic men regard uh, the world around him or the society in which he lives, finally concentrating himself on, on the reason of the sense of, of being, he arrives to the concept of something sacred, something sacred, something that inspires very particular feeling and uh, some anthropologists as for example uh, Levi Brühl, Lucien Levi Brühl, French anthropologist, uh, called that mystical participation. But what is important that doesn't mean that ethnic men participate mystically in the world but he participate in the sacred dimension of the world that is common to the nature and to the society. So mystical participation doesn't mean that the subject, human subject, um, doesn't understand the limits or the borders between himself and the object of nature. It is not exactly because that is a kind of impo imposition on the ethnic society some um, features of modern society where uh, the difference between subject and object is clearly defined. But in the ethnic society uh, this uh, border um, doesn't uh, exist. Uh, so uh, participation, mystical participation, is a kind of, of participation in the sacred that is regarded as the kind of paradigm common for the nature and the society. So it is not participation in the world around it. It is at the same time the participation in the sacred world inside of the man. So there is not clearly this clear distinction between inner and outer in the ethnic society. Instead of inner and outer, uh, here we are dealing with the sacred and the profane. It's a completely different kind of taxonomy. Profane is peripheric, peripheric. Uh, in the sense of what uh, is situated on the periphery of all of the nature or society and the sacred that is situated in the center of all. So uh, all being, including nature, society, man, spirits, animals, uh, plants and so cultural institutions uh, historical events, all that could be regarded as something sacred. In this case we are dealing with something uh, that is uh, 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 loaded with this inner sense and that could be accepted, that could be assimilated, that could be understood because uh, to, to uh, understand is to get the contact with the sacred for the ethnic society. And there are many peripheric points uh, or profane uh, points they, that fall out from consideration of ethnic men. So the, the most important problem is to, to reach to the sacred core 
of the event or institution of uh, the thing or uh, natural phenomenon. Rudolf Otta, already mentioned author of uh, The Sacred, uh, introduced uh, the concept of Numen. Numen, it is Latin word for God, but not for uh, the God in the sense of great God that created the universe or that is ruler of the, of, of the universe, but uh, little God, a kind of uh, the God that is near to the man, that God that um, is present in the everyday life. So the Greeks also, they uh, had the concept of diamond uh, before uh, the Christ, uh, that uh, uh, this term had a positive, rather positive meaning as a kind of um, divinity that is close to the man, to the nature, that could be easily reached. So. Uh, the presence of the Numen, of this secondary god, or close god, uh, it uh, ma uh, manifests itself um, in the sense of numinosity. And this is uh, a direct uh, translation of the feeling of the sacred. And phenomenologically, uh, Numinosity is a kind of special experience of the presence on, of something other, of some power, of some force that man could not define uh, in the rational terms. Uh, for that is a kind of feeling of hidden presence in the thing, in the situation, uh, of, uh, some uh, radical form of this uh, presence, of this feeling could be individuated in the clinical cases of uh, uh, schizophrenia or uh, obsession or po kind of possession, uh, Phenomenology, phenomenology of religious state of possession, for example, but it is the limit uh, cases. But um, numinosity, it is also the understanding of the sacred aspect of the thing. Uh, it could be, um, could be, uh, uh, it could be perceived in different manners, but. Uh, 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 something, uh, the luminosity is a kind of uh, inspiration uh, going um, out of the think, of the emotion, uh, some um, special dimension of something that provoke uh, mobilization of the inner sense of the presence in the world and to be in the presence of something that really mean something, something, uh, something that uh, make difference. So uh, it is a kind uh, of um, awakeness in front of, of the thing or to be astonished, to be st st struck uh, by um, by invisible but um, uh, very strong presence of something uh, that you could not uh, could not describe, could not uh, win, could not define properly. So it is a kind of luminosity, and all the structures of the ethnos in the center are. Be, uh, are mm, in contact with the luminosity. They, uh, um, they, mm, they have their origins in the uh, sacred sources or 
uh, and they perceived as they are uh, in a state of numinosity. That sacred nature of ethnic society makes from the nature around it and from the society itself uh, you know, the, the sacred space and sacred time. So uh, th that is uh, that explains uh, also the concept of person. It is very important that now in the modern culture, in modern philosophy, in modern in modern science, we are dealing with the concept uh, most of all uh, of individual or the rational uh, the subject with free will. For us, uh, the, the obvious evident uh, form of humanity is the human individual that possesses uh, rationality, the will, and is considered to be the kind of atom of humanity, of society, of uh, uh, politics, and so on. And for us, individual is something that is uh, constant, that uh, is constant during all uh, life. The man uh, is born as individual, human individual and dies as individual and from the beginning to the end the individual is the same individual so it is our modern concept of human being but in the ethnic sacred structures there is no such concept there is no such individual as a mm, uh, as an object, as, uh, as a thing. We are dealing with completely different concept that was defined by anthropologist Marcel Moss as person. The person is uh, etymologically the mask, the mask. So the person and the ethnic society is the same as the mask. If we consider to individual to be something constant and the mask that you could change, uh, ethnic attitudes toward the person and the, the principle of personality is quite opposite. So the mask is constant and the individual is something, a, a kind of variable. So the mask exists, the mask is that is, uh, that possesses a real being, a real sacred force and real um, existence. And individual is a kind of instrument for the mask. That explains that uh, identity uh, of, the, of, of the human being in the ethnic society he isn't individual one. Its identity, uh, ident the, the identity is personal. So, what is the person? It could be explained uh, as a kind of totem. Totem is the person. Totem could uh, be situated on different level. Or the, the society could possess a uh, gray totem. Uh, so everybody could be considered to be um, descendants of this totem or representatives of this totem. That is highest personality, highest identity, big totem of the um, tribal community, the, the person of the ethnos. But in some situation, uh, first of all, in, this, in the confrontation with different ethnic groups, uh, the identification with this totem is full. So the ethnic group acts as if it were the, this same common 
person that is totem that is entering in the war, in the process of peace, in the competition. It is not individual, it is a whole represented as great totem. There are uh, the, the taxonomy of the to sub totems also. For example, two fratres, uh, fratres uh, of the tribe, although also possess their own sub totems. There could be uh, that could exist the uh, sub totems of, of the families of the of the age also and passing from one age to the other. In ethnic society, the man changes the name, but changing the name, it is also the changing the change of the personality and identity. So, with, uh, for example, in the uh, in the uh, ritual of initiation, uh, it is uh, common to change the name, and the person before initiation and after in its initiation uh, is regarded as two persons, two different persons with two different names, and they uh, are treated differently. So uh, in uh, the initia initiation, first person dies, and it is regarded as dead. A new person um, is born with new name, and with new identity. So there could exist also the different identity, different personality for uh, men or women uh, before the marriage and after, because the marriage also in many ethnic societies is regarded as something sacred, as a kind of uh, sacred ritual. So, for example, uh, old age in some tribes is regarded as changing of personality and passing to the new group that also represents new kind of persons. Uh, and uh, they possess their, um, their proper history, uh, changing the name, uh, changing the social position in the society, social status, is the same as uh, individual uh, gas out from uh, filled from the land that is owned by some uh, identity, by sub-totem, and uh, come to, to the other, uh, to the other land, to uh, under influence, uh, under um, legacy of the other sub-totem. So it is the, ch uh, the change of personality that is com it is considered to be different human being so individual is uh, something that isn't recognized in the society as having uh, continuity it's something fragmented it's something secondary secondary uh, secondary and it is something mm, that is not a substance it is a kind of accidents. It is a kind of uh, um, uh, purely um, uh, external form that could be used by different identities or by different entities. And so that is importance of the mask. Mask that is precisely the person. Uh, the, the Roman word person signifies the mask, uh, exactly as Greek term prosopon. Uh, prosopon, it is also person, it is also mask. So the idea that masks represent a real sacred identity. So the dance with the masks and using the masks in different sacred ritual is uh, a, a, a process of manifestation of real identity of some human groups. So it is the dance of the mask where 
the living man leave the, uh, the, the, the situation, the moment sacred dance with the mask is a kind of manifestation of real personality. And the dancers and individualities of the dancers is completely possessed by this mask. So the mask leaves through the dancer. Uh, so it is uh, a completely opposite relations than in our understanding of what is human being. So the most human identity and the ethnic society is not human in our sense. It is a, kind, a moment of manifestation of the sacred as the core of the reality core of the reality that unites the nature and the spirits of nature and the entities of nation with the society, human society. So it is a kind of inclusive anthropology because the person, why uh, we're, uh, we are using the word totem and why the totem uh, could represent, for example, the animal or the spirit, or some instrument. Because in this concept of the personality, there is no, uh, no difference between the nature and the culture, between the society and the world, world around, between the animal and human, between the god or numen, better, the, the, the divinity close to us, and instrument of everyday um, uh, practice. So all is sacred, all is, um, all is seized by the roots, by the sacred roots, where this difference doesn't exist yet. So the, the, the idea uh, to understand what is human, what is person, uh, it is the same as, understand, uh, to, as uh, to understand what is sacred, because sacred person or being or reality of the mask or identity or, that, or, or the totem is something that is previous uh, in front of later fixation in the human, animal, social, natural, and so on. In something that is primordial, that something that gives the reality, the being in this and the sense to the exterior and interior world. So it, uh, where is this person? Where lives the totem? What is the ontology of the person in the ethnic society. It's very interesting. So when we ask about where, about this category of space, we are arriving directly to the concept of the sacred space, inner space, uh, as a kind of special state of mind, special state of feelings, special state of spirit, spe special, special um, understanding of the existence uh, that is original, that is primordial, that is pragmatic for all the rest. So it could not be explained not by natural phenomena nor by social phenomena. It is something that precedes to natural and the social. It is a kind of sacred space that exists before the profane space and we are living always on the periphery of this sacred space. space. And ethnos that is sacred is situated th theoretically itself in the center of this sacred space. The ethnical being, ethnical life is 
exactly manifestation of this centrality of the invisible sacred space. So, uh, phenomenologically, ethnos is living on the periphery, but uh, in its spiritual understanding of the world and of the being, it lives in the center of this uh, sacred space. So, sacred space is a kind of spiritual state that is experienced, experienced by the man in, uh, when it, the man is touched by numinosity. And this, it, it is impossible to understand where it is because it, because it is not inside or outside of the man. It is previous. It is something that transcends the inside or outside, inner and outer. And it is properly the sacred. The sacred is out there, and at the same time, the sacred space is here, precisely here. We are to, to be in ethnos, to live ethnic, ethnic life, is exactly the same as to experience the sacred as something that is here and now. But at the same time, the sacred is something that is very far outside, very far from us. So, in the moment of the sacred ritual, of the mask dance, of initiation, and other magical rites, uh, the farthest point of the world when the sacred space is located and the concrete experience here of the human presence is united. It is the, the, the sense of uh, the uh, structure of um, the ethnos. And what is person? The person is something sacred. So, it is a messenger of the sacred space or the point or the place in the sacred space. So, the mask is the space and the person at the same time. It is a point of sacred space that it could find, it should find its proper lo uh, localization in the context of, of uh, the sacred space. Uh, its own position, its uh, own orientation, uh, but at the same time it is real presence of the sacred space. From these considerations we are coming to uh, the centrality of the shaman. Shaman as the central figure of the ethnos. And the shaman is concentration of the sacred. The shaman is personality of the ethnos. It is also the living link between periphery and the center. For the, the most important uh, mission of the shaman is unite two sides of the being, uh, sacred and the profane, transcendental and immanent, uh, what the farthest and the nearest, the closest. So, shaman, shaman is uniting figure, and so he is sacred uh, above the other persons because precisely he is the face of sacrality in the human society, and at the same time he he represent human human uh, society in the face in the front of sacred. He is messenger, and he is um, also uh, mediator, mediator between uh, what is close and what is far. So he represents the sacred, the world of God, the sacred, uh, the masks, the totems, the dead, and the real living spirits, uh, numens in the human society, but at the same time he makes part of the society of the spirits or he lives uh, 
in the sacred space where he represents human and society of human being. So he logically he is in the center of this society, of ethnic society, and could be regarded as most important figure of the ethnos. He could be uh, regarded also as a kind of manifestation of the totem or the specialist in the, uh, of, uh, in the real of the roots of, uh, uh, of, of the being. He is chosen from the other to be, to represent a kind of species. Uh, species. Uh, he is not individual. The shaman, uh, that uh, is most important feature of this sacred figure that is central in the ethnos, in any ethnic group, the shaman plays the most important part. He is central for ethnic society. He represents not individual. The shaman is not individual. He is a kind of eidos. He is speci species. Uh, he is an uh, individual manifestation of what is common, of, of, the, of, of the whole gender. So shaman is a kind of ethnic humanity, personification of ethnic humanity. He is not human individual. He is humanity itself so it has its its his place not on the same level as the other society he always is in the center and in this point central point is a point of connection uh, with other worlds with other dimensions so he is a kind of uh, summary of the society uh, for the sacred and the summary of the sacred in front of society. He plays always double, double function. Uh, double function because he could introduce the sacred in the society in most important moment of a human uh, life, for example, in a moment of the birth, the shaman and his rituals play very important role there. In the moment of initiation, in the moment of marriage, in the moment of uh, most important um, ritual or uh, mysteries, and in the moment of uh, the feasts and fests and uh, the death of, of, of the person. So uh, the, the shaman uh, enters, in the, in the, enters in the play uh, when the, uh, the human uh, individual uh, approaches something really important for important for the ethnic society so uh, important the important is the sacred so uh, shaman is logically uh, uh, most uh, important uh, person uh, when uh, we are touching um, uh, fundamental points of existence of the ethnic society. So uh, shaman also um, is considered to be a kind of uh, pre-human. There are many myths uh, in the um, tribal tribal uh, societies, for example. Uh, in the Tungus society studied by uh, Russian searcher Sergei Shirakagorov, uh, when uh, there are tales, sacred tales, about uh, 
um, the uh, ancient times, uh, nilo tempore, uh, ancient times, they preceded the actual epoch. In this time, uh, Tungus's say, uh, there, uh, uh, there uh, were only souls, they uh, were common for the animals, for the spirits and gods, and for the human. So these souls existed partly as human, partly as spirits, partly as animals. And they were the same souls. And they could choose freely to be sometime human, sometime spirit, sometime animal at the will. So, and after a kind of catastrophe, uh, there was the moment uh, when these souls were fixed in the bodies they occupied temporarily forever. So, the, some souls were linked to the humans, some souls were linked to the animals, and some uh, souls uh, uh, became uh, spirits. So that was a great distinction, division, a great distinction uh, between different kind of, of, of uh, uh, species. But uh, what is important so that to be shaman, in order to be shaman, uh, the candidate should restore this quality of primordial soul. It should return to the place from where all these kinds, animal spirits and humans, departed, parted in the first, in this original uh, epoch, and uh, the shaman should restore, uh, reconstruct the identity of the soul that preceded uh, uh, to this split. It's very important. So the soul of Shaman is reconstructed soul of the universe that includes humanity, spirits, and animals. And returning from the Shaman trip, Shaman journey to the source of the being, to the great tree, or uh, to the source of the river of the existence. He there passes through different transformation. Uh, he passes the, the death and revival and recomposition of his body and his entity, uh, where always the spirits and the animals play important part. So uh, his soul, primordial soul, is restored in this shamanic trip, shamanic initiation, and he returns with two necessary uh, helpers, the animals and the spirits that serve to the shaman. So, animals that are under control of shaman and the spirits that help to him to, to accomplish his rituals and uh, healing uh, procedures and uh, so on, they considered to be the other part of the same soul. soul. Shaman soul is not only human soul. The shaman is not only human. He is primordial soul, res soul restored with its prolongation uh, in, in the, in, in the um, animals and spirits that are regarded as helpers to the shaman. But idea is to restore the sacred identity. The shaman and the sacred structure of the uh, ethnos, ethnic group, uh, is a kind of the ethnos, ethnos itself. It is not collected figure. 
it is figure of natural manifestation of the normative uh, aspect of the ethnic being, ethnic living, lost, uh, according to the legends uh, and myths uh, uh, in the primordial time, but restored in the course of the shamanic initiation. So it is a kind of um, manifestation of the totemic personality. And uh, the shaman could be regarded as the ess essence of uh, ethnic uh, society. So we have spoken before that main goal of ethnic existence in the ethnostatic level of eth ethnic being is uh, necessity to conserve the same uh, state of the thing, to conserve status quo, not to give uh, uh, th the changes to uh, be accomplished, not uh, to the uh, best, nor to the worst. So the, uh, the sense of ethnic living is, uh, uh, is conservation of what is, because what is is regarded as sacred. And that defines most important, important uh, mission of shaman. Shema, shaman is the person that is responsible for the conservation of the same. So it is his most important function. So shaman sh heals. So he uh, repairs uh, uh, the, the state of, uh, uh, of, of the man, of, of, of the wrecked or um, ill person. And healing is restoration, is conservation. Uh, by the rituals, uh, shaman restore uh, the seasons. For example, he helps to the sun to uh, go up by the morning and in the spring. And he, he uh, helps to the sun in the night or during the winter to pass through dark uh, points, dark uh, places of the universe. And it is conceived as real facts. So accomplishing these uh, in rituals, shaman thinks, and all the other society thinks also that it is real help to the to nature uh, to conserve its uh, structure. So this is a kind of repairing the reality as periphery, appealing always to the sacred. So making appeal to the sacred by the way of the rituals of the sacred rituals. Shaman repairs always the society and universe, the universe. And it is the same procedure to heal the people or to help the sun to go up. It is considered to be the same ritual because appealing to the sacred, Shaman is going in contact with the roots of the old reality social reality as well as natural reality. So that is a kind of uh, sense of the shamanic mission in the ethnos and the key to understand the, the sacrality of the ethnic structures 
it is uh, idea that appealing to the, uh, the, the world, world of origins, to the sacred place that coincides uh, with the essence of the ethnos, uh, is necessary to recreate, restore, and reaffirm uh, the reality as it is. And that is what we could call ethnic work or the work of ethnic being. So ethnos, in the presence of the shaman, first of all, but also in the presence, uh, in, the, uh, in the persons of all other members of the ethnos that accomplish different ritual or economic or social acts, all of them always repair the reality, always, always bring the reality to the sacred roots of the reality. And that is uh, the destiny of the man, to re-sacralize, to repair the world, repairing the society, repairing the time and the space by the way of the sacrality. That is also a very important uh, point of this sacred structure of the ethnos is a binary composition of ethnic community. Uh, this binary composition is based on the idea of exogamy. Exogamy is a real secret of ethnic, ethnic life. The principle of exogamy is the same as uh, interdiction of the ancestral, ancestral relations. But what is ancestral? In ethnos, ancestral is uh, sexual relations uh, in the domain, in the limits of the same uh, of the same uh, clan. So, uh, to uh, have uh, licit uh, relations, uh, people need representatives of the other exogamous clan. So, for have in one and the same society two exogamous uh, different clans, uh, we need always to um, accentuate the differences between one clan and the other. And at the same time, to conserve both of them in the limits of the same ethnic community. So, minimal ethnic structure is composed by two clans, by two exogamous group. And the most important activity of the ethnos and huge amount of the materials of the legends, of the uh, tales, fairy tales and myths and religious rituals of the society uh, are orientated precisely in this direction to reinforce the difference be between two exogamous groups of fatness at and the same time to conserve both groups in the same social structure. That is a, a kind of primordial dialectic, ethnic, ethnic dialectic, because we need uh, to have two different uh, uh, groups that shouldn't be the same. So, we need to stress always this difference of two exogamous types, uh, clans, two exogamous groups. At the same time, we need to conserve them, both of them, in the context of the same unity. So, we should have unity, but we, at the same time, we need to have duality. And 
duality should be accentuated as well as unity. So it is a dialectical challenge. And this ethnical dialect, uh, ethnic and this ethnic dialectics is the basis of the ethnic existence and the ethnic structure. And uh, that is um, very is important work of Heisinger, Dutch uh, uh, searcher, that is called Homo Ludens, playing men, Homo Ludens. In this book, Heisinger shows that in the origins of many social institutions, there is a game. A game as phenomenon. And for Heisinger, this is principal and central source of many social institutions. And we could affirm that the game is the axis of the society. All the society is constructed around people uh, who mm, play. So, that, it, that could be explained in the field of the ethno-sociology by the necessity to, uh, re, uh, to, to create the social frame for ethnic dialectic. Unite the society and divide the society at the, time, at the same time at, at least to half. So, what is the game in this sense? The game, it is a concurrence that unites and divides at the same time. That is not war. War, the war divides, only divides. There is a peace that only unites. But that there is a game that unites and divides at the same time. So, the origins of the game is, according to the Heisinger, as the origins of the culture itself. Because all culture, all cultural institutions, according to him, uh, were born from the game. The game is a most important form of relations between two clans of the same ethnic group, two exogamous parts of the same tribe. And the relations of the game include uh, a kind of competition, a kind of division, a kind of uh, opposition. And it is necessary to be foreign, foreign for the other clan. To have licit marriage, we need to take uh, the partner from different uh, part of, of clan of the uh, ethnic community. But what is this difference? How we could assert it? And uh, by the way of uh, stressing always these in all uh, relations possible. They are other. The other part is other. It is not the same. So it is licit for the marriage. And all the cultural uh, develops from this moment, from division. So that was the origins of the poetry, because the primordial poetry uh, was organized as uh, demands and, uh, and the responses, uh, questions and the answers by two parts of two ethnic groups. So it was most ancient kind of poetry. And uh, the questions and the answers should be rhymed. rhymed. They should coincide in, uh, in, in formally, but they should be a kind of ritual quarrel between these 
um, to parts of uh, um, ethnic ethnic structures. So that is a kind also the, the origins of the song. That is the origin of the dance, because in the dance, uh, in the poetry, uh, in the in the music, always there are two groups of participants they, they, that are considered to be different. Uh, it and different, but at the same time, uh, the, the first uh, 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 the first contact between them is a kind of recognition and competition at the same time. So that is also exchange of the words, of the brides, of the gifts, of the of the po uh, poems, of the sounds, musical sounds, and ritual, ritual uh, objects. So this uh, ethno-sociology of the game is a basic feature of ethnic structure, that is binary structure. And the same binary structure of two clans that are necessary to form uh, ethnos, it is also the necessity to, uh, to have, to conserve both parts in the same context, in the same unity. So the game divides and opposes, but at the same time it is not serious. Uh, Joseph Heisinger uh, gave a very interesting example. Uh, that is the play of a little dog, uh, dogs. So when there are two little dogs that are playing with them, they imitate, imitate the aggression, they imitate attack, they uh, imitate the, um, the, the position of uh, uh, attack, but they always stop uh, on the edge of really hurting each other. So the, the animals also know what is a game. It is a kind of imitating aggression just to the point where it could really hurt to the other, other being. And that is a kind of imitation of uh, animosity. Uh, that is very interesting moment, psychological and cultural moment, where one stops uh, to act seriously, mm, giving the, the image that it uh, uh, um, act seriously. Uh, it is, and uh, what is interesting and most exciting, exciting in the game, that is ser seriousness of uh, unserious procedure. It is a kind of ironic uh, irony. That is a kind of humoristic attitude in uh, the imitation of profound seriousness of uh, uh, the uh, of the acts. So that is a, a key to the game. Uh, the the game is imitation of real hostility, hostility, uh, but uh, the hostility is manifested, it is uh, declared, it is open, this hostility, but this hostility does not hurt. It is hostility, um, a kind of uh, visual hostility, that uh, is hostility uh, of, uh, of special kind, that precisely because always there is moment 
but it grows up to the situation to come to real hostility and real struggle. Uh, two groups uh, of ethnic community stops right there, right on the edge of the passing through criti critical point. And that is most important moment in the in the social history and the organization of the society. Ethnic society is basing on the culture of this point, the, the point where the reality suddenly becomes the game or the play. And the, the man is someone, a kind that could master the game. So that is a uh, reason for, that was the reason for Joseph Heisinger to call uh, his book Gomo Ludens. And that was also studied in the philosophy, in the field of philosophy by Eugen uh, Fink, German philosopher and phenomenologist, the friend of Husserl and Heidegger. Uh, Eugen Fink uh, also uh, saw uh, in the game, uh, um, the uh, real and deepest human identity as of humankind. So, to master the game, the, um, to master uh, the attitude of the play, it is precisely most important central human feature. And if we regard it ethno-sociologically, we see that play or the game is central point of organization of the ethnos. And also the conservation of the ethnic structure. Because the game, it is the, uh, the most important function of, of the society. The game is the central moment of the ethnic living because in the game there is confrontation, there is unification precisely in moment, uh, in accentuated moment of uh, stopping before real violence and real aggression. Just this moment it is most important. And all uh, that precedes its preparation for this moment and all that follows it are the results, is the result of uh, this moment. This moment is the moment of, of the birth of the culture. And this moment is the center of ethnic, ethnic, ethnic level, uh, living, ethnic life. Because here, in this moment of the game, the, the difference and unification of the uh, parts of, uh, of the ethnos is not only manifested, but also concluded, realized, fulfilled. And during the game, in the game, there are ritual of uh, um, preparation for the um, marriage, the choice of the brides, uh, the exchange of the gifts, uh, and what Marcel Moss um, uh, called uh, uh, the total delivery, the process of total delivery. Uh, the situation when one part of the ethnic community delivers to the other part or uh, important symbolical sign. Delivering uh, this part could be expressed in the delivering of the uh, women, delivering of the gifts, delivering of the words, delivering of the rhymes during the game or the dances or other sacred rituals or delivering initiation. And uh, all the economy in the 
ethnic societies is based on this concept of total deliveries. One part of the ethnos delivers to the other what it could propose, and the other delivers uh, in the counter uh, gift uh, all uh, that it possesses. So it is a kind of exchange, mutual exchange, that always reconstruct the same ethnic structure. Also, we, we see here uh, the main uh, purpose of ethnic living, conserve the same. And in the game, there is conservation of two most important conditions of the, of the ethnic living. Uh, the conditions of the existence of at least two uh, heterogamous uh, clans that is stressed by uh, imitation of aggression and opposition of two parts. At the same time, uh, the, the, the moment when the aggression stops, it is a moment when exchange begins. So also the, the, uh, there is a need to conserve both parts in the same context and to exchange uh, the special totems, the special qualities, the special persons, the special identity or signs or, or words or other symbols uh, to, to, uh, between each other. So that is uh, the game is ethnic uh, labor, ethnic work. Uh, the most important work and uh, economic activity is the game. Because playing uh, the ethnos reproduces itself in the social sense, but also creates the conditions of physical reproductions. Because in the game, between two playing parts, there are the relations of licit marriage. So it is preconditioned to give the birth to the other, uh, other generations. The atmos reproduces itself uh, in, the, in the play, uh, in, the, in the game, and in all senses. But at the same time, uh, reproducing itself as society, the ethnos reproduces the reality as whole, universe. And that is the reason why the game is, uh, al uh, is always something cosmic. Because there are not human individuals who participate in the game, but they are uh, there are the, the persons, the totems, the masks, uh, the signs, the symbols who participate in this game. That is not the dialogue between human individuals. That is the dialogue between spirits, between totems or sub-totems. There is a dialogue. There is a game between the souls, these primordial souls that are, uh, they, that existed before separation of different types or kinds of uh, living, uh, living creatures in the uh, ancient uh, Tungus myths. So that uh, in the game, it is important also uh, it, uh, uh, the identity of the uh, players because uh, who plays in the acting game uh, that is not individual. Individual also uh, in this case as in the other is only instrument, is only fragment, is only flesh uh, without substance. There is uh, the, the personality of the clan, the totem who appears in the game, 
who manifests himself. And that gives to the game the sacred character. The game is sacred. And that is why the culture of the society is sacred. Why the marriage is sacred. Why the poetry is sacred. And why all the social relations in the ethnic group is sacred. Because it is not serious. Uh, because it is rooted in the game. So, uh, uh, at the conclusion, uh, we need to uh, stress some points. Uh, the um, ethnic structures uh, are conceived to be eternal, uh, to be static, to be the same. And that is how ethnos understands itself and the reality around it. It is normative knowledge of the things that these things are always the same. So the same is the society, the same are the personalities, the same are laws, the, the, the same are uh, misses and the same uh, are um, identities and processes. And this reproduction of the same is the ethnic labor, the sense of ethnic work. But uh, at the same time, this conceptual supposition of the eternity of uh, the structure, static structure of the atmos and the world around it, uh, it is not only something given, it is also value. That's important. So it is considered to be the matter of facts, but at the same time it is considered to be the goal of ethnic living. All is the same, but in order to conserve the same as it is, we need to work. We need to participate in the sacred. We need to support the whole exactly as it is. And uh, these, these makes, this aspect makes status quo the value and uh, defines also the following um, part of concerns of the ethnos that we, um, we will study in the other lecture dedicated to the ethno-dynamic. Okay, uh, questions. Uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, we have an ethnic tribe living in whatever time by our concept it was, the, the prehistoric past, the modern day, we have an ethnic tribe living in its world. And then one day, a complete stranger, obviously a human being, but an alien, comes into their midst. Does the ethnos have a concept of the other? One can imagine the, uh, the sequence of events that played out when ethnic tribes in the New World encountered uh, conquistadors and colonists for the first time. So, first of all, ethnos is precisely the social group that have that has not idea of the other so ethnos it is by definition something that doesn't know the other and does not have a place for the other so it is completely closed for the new and for the difference 
differences outside of mastered ethnical differences included in the ethnic ethnic group. So when the alien comes, he should be included in this cosmos. So he should find the name in the myths, in the in the language. Uh, so first of all, he should receive the name, the word. So after that, he will be introduced and he will signify exactly what this word or name signify. So he could be considered as a ghost, as a spirit, as a representative of other tribes or some special place in the universe, maybe from the hell or from the god, as were conquistadors. They will be considered to be white gods returning from from their sacred sacred fatherland. So first of all he will be included in the context of ethnic society. After that he if he stays he will be socialized, ethno socialized by participating in such or such ritual. He will discover his ethnic history. He will receive ethnic identity or the series or the series of ethnic identities passing from initiation, from the age, from the clans. He will receive wife. So he will be inscribed in some clan or he will be eaten. In this situation he will be assimilated in ethnic whole, but he will find his place as living or dead person. That, that, is, that depends on the uh, circumstances. So, and after being assimilated, included by such or such uh, way, he will be not anymore alien. He will be the same, he will be of the same ethnic group. He will be the member or the part or the identity. He will be he will uh, he will be dissolved in the ethnic group. Very good. Okay. Uh, next we have uh, you describe the mindset, the perception of the universe uh, of the ethnos um, as one that uh, has uh, recognizes no boundary or has very uh, gray boundaries between the concept of uh, uh, us and uh, either the spirit world or the natural world, uh, often the same thing. Um, to us, in, uh, brought up under the processes of modernity, uh, we might define that mindset as uh, clinical insanity. Um, and likewise, if we were to try to explain that we define a distinct difference between the subject and the object, or if uh, the ethnic uh, world was able to see modernity where humanity and nature are not only separate, but we often view our society as permanently at war with nature, they might define that in their own terms as insanity. Can we in the modern world truly understand the mindset uh, of the ethnos at all? I think that that depends on the standpoint. First of all, Shurakagorov, Sergei Shurakagorov, uh, studied closely uh, the, uh, the cases of mental disorder in the ethnic uh, primitive societies and he has arrived to the conclusion repeated after him by Mircea Lade and other uh, searchers about strictly strict difference between cases of mental disorders 
and uh, all-inclusive world vision in the ethnic community. Ethnic primitive tribes also know the situation of mentally ill persons, and they dif differentiate clearly differentiate shamans or candidates to the shamans and mentally ill person. That was very interesting. Uh, above all, when this statement is based on the sociological studies, on the studies of the concrete cases, they show what are the differences. So the concept of mental illness and the phenomena of uh, crazy craziness of mental illness um, are known to the ethnic tribes and they considered to be mentally ill schizophrenics or paranoiacs as mentally ill but shamans or the society in general are perf perfectly logical ones but they possess different kind of logos they their rationality is different. There is not under rationality, as uh, evolutionists uh, wanted to to describe them. That is other alternative rationality, as Claude Levi Strauss has shown. But I think that, that uh, uh, when you ask about could we modern understand or accept that as Alternative that depends on how much racists we are. If we considered our Western civilization as the best and universal goal of human development, so we are profoundly racist. And in this case, we could grant to the ethnic society on the label of underdeveloped, uh, limited and destined to the progress, uh, repeating, imitating the West. So, it is clear, and uh, progressist uh, thought is exactly such. So, it is racism, pure racism. Uh, cultural, scientific, economical, political, social, and so on. But if we are not racist, uh, we could seriously ask ourselves about universi universality of our own culture. And there are many options there. Some people could recognize, could affirm that it is universal. They, in this sense, they become um, conscious uh, racist. So they not uh, only racists uh, by inertia, by their conscience. They affirm that Western culture is a universal one, and they could prove it. They could give arguments. So it is stand uh, one of possible stand point, and there is the people who doubt it. So that is completely other. Mm, other situation and when they begin to search in the non-western cultures they arrive uh, very soon to the conclusion that there are completely different kind editions of logos for example in the case of Asian civilizations Chinese civilization or Hindu civilization it is obvious that we could have other rational constructions with logic, philosophy, and very developed kind of uh, uh, logical civilization. But it is only first step. There is a second step. The step to uh, to to make is to uh, search deeper and try to find the logos in the uh, in the ethnic tribes that uh, are also they have very little in common with Chinese or Japanese or Hindu or civil or Buddhist civilizations. That is something 
really different. But uh, if we could arrive to the point to um, to find there the locus, as Levi Strauss or other anthropologists have done, so we could uh, change completely our attitude to our uh, culture, because that immediately that uh, stops to be universal. Oh, civilization applying not only to the Western civilization but also to uh, Chinese civilization or Hindu civilization also uh, loses its its sense. So uh, we will discover completely new vision of humanity and of human society. And that was precisely the conclusion of Richard Turnwald and the founder of ethno-sociology. So ethno-sociology considered considers all kind of human society as possessing a kind of locus. But in one forms it is obvious and uh, external and uh, uh, explicit. In other societies uh, this logos is different, alter alternative and sometimes implicit. I have uh, one last question. Um, you discuss um, the totems, uh, shamans, and uh, initiation as being fundamental to the structures of uh, ethnic society, of the ethnos. Um, uh, in the modern day, I think we can see, uh, you could say, uh, pale attempts at imitation of these social structures, uh, probably devoid of uh, all concept of the sacred, thus robbing them of, of, of their value. Uh, do you see anywhere in uh, the modern world that we have, whether within culture, modern, modern culture of modernity, or within subcultures, uh, genuine recreations uh, of the totem, uh, the shaman, and initiation? And if not, what have we lost? So, uh, the, uh, for example, in the monotheistic religion, there are uh, direct analogy to Shannon is the priest, initiation is the uh, baptism, baptism, and the totem is the person of the god, of monotheistic god, that is considered to be living in the heart of the believers. So it is a kind of um, rationalization of the same complex. So totem is not necessarily animal. It could be God and or spirit or, or sign. So the cross is our Christian totem in, in some, some sense. So uh, that is clear. But uh, after secularization of, of the West, uh, the idea uh, was uh, to uh, leave aside, to, to go out of this kind of prejudices. Of, uh, that was desacralization of the world, uh, disenchantment, uh, disenchantment, and uh, Zauberung in German. Uh, the, the, uh, the thesis, uh, the, the word was proposed by Max Weber, sociologist uh, Max Weber, and Sauberung, uh, disenchantment, disenchantment. So, uh, and, but what is interesting, Mircea Lade and the other uh, authors and historians of religion affirm that in the secularized, secularized, secularized modernity, there is a kind of hidden return of, of the sacred. And so uh, there are kind of uh, pseudo-initiation, pseudo-shaman or pseudo-totem. So there are the cult of the stars as a kind of uh, personality. Celebrities. 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 Celebrities are totemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, initiation is a kind of uh, 
for example, uh, uh, drugs uh, uh, and uh, um, other uh, youth uh, rituals. Uh, or uh, little groups of uh, in the modern town of uh, 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 rockers and the anarchist, uh, anarchist uh, community or hippie or punks. Uh, they could be regarded as postmodern, modern or postmodern tribes in some way, and they imitated also uh, Indian or ethnic culture. I can attest that the military also has rites of initiation, although I think they are devoid of the sense of the sacred. But in Russian army also there is a kind of ritual violence against newly... Uh, newly Hazing. Uh, yes, yes, the kind of... Uh, that uh, uh, real problem uh, because uh, um, young, young soldiers, they pass one year mm -hmm. Uh, in the condition of initiation, they are molested, they are uh, aggressed, attacked by the elder. But on the second year, they, they become elders mm -hmm. and they begin to molest and violate the young one. So it is a kind of exchange of the roles, a kind of initiation. There are many, many uh, pseudo initiations in the different. Uh, uh, segments of modern um, society and shaman I think that uh, also celebrity uh, or um, gurus of different kinds uh, or uh, political commentatory they are a kind of um, shamans because they told that they think that uh, don't exist and they uh, they insist uh, on us to believe in, in the things that, that don't, don't exist. They understand maybe a uh, kind of magic, telemagic by this. Political commentators in, in the West, uh, uh, they are called uh, ironically pandits. Pandits, yes. Pandits, so pandits maybe Latin, kind of yeah. pandits. I have to admit, when you were discussing these concepts, I was trying to imagine modernity, uh, um, the corporation as the ethnos, and thinking of, say, Ronald McDonald, the clown that is the corporate mascot of the McDonald's corporation, as a totem. The celebrities so. that sell us the products as our shamans, and uh, our initiation as the right of consumption. Yes, also because uh, the objects are magical, and so uh, uh, as uh, Jean Baudrillard has said, now we are coming to the production of the science, semi urbia. So we, uh, the consumption is not uh, the object of the consumption. Our consumption in our society are not anymore the objects, real objects are the science. So we are. Uh, our consumption is consumption of the science, is uh, labels, for example, so n not of the products, mm -hmm. but uh, symbols. Identity. Identities, status, yes, identity. exactly. So, uh, we are eating not uh, uh, the nurture, mm -hmm. but uh, mm, labels of, of some kind of science. Yes. Science or symbols. Thank you very much.